Sean makes so many eat the spices to eat. Next remedy is a physical stigma. In that, we can see there is a follicular conjunctivitis, staphyloma after suppurative inflammation, increasing the myopia and contraction of the pupil with the twitching of ocular muscle, with night blindness, photophobia, glaucoma, flashes of light, partial blindness, paresis of accommodation. Profuse lacrimation, astigmatism, spasm of severe muscle irritability with after using the eyes, then post dyspneumatic paralysis of eye and accommodation muscle. So, physostigma is also useful remedy. In staphyloma after suppurative inflammation. Then we see the rust stock, that is rust toxicodendron. In this, we can see a solar red irritated or vital cellulitis, ocular inflammation, and photophobia with the profuse flow of yellow pus, edema of leaves, suppurative iritis, lid inflamed, agglutinated solar, old into your eye, surface stripe. Corneal injection, intensive ulceration of the cornea, iritis after exposure to cold and dampness of rheumatic origin, eyes are painful or turning it or pressure. There is a profuse gush of hot, scalding tear upon opening the lid, worse by cold, wet, rainy weather, night, and during rest, and better in a warmth and dry weather. So it is a useful remedy when there is a chronic corneal inflammation due to foreign body. It is also useful in finaticular keratitis. And staphyloma after suppurative inflammation of cornea. And it is useful in a corneal inflammation. So it is very useful remedy and not useful in a staphyloma or situation inflammation of course. Then next is the sepia. So in the sepia we can see there is a muscular a stenopia and black spot in the field of vision with the asthenic inflammation and in connection with uterine trouble. There is an aggravation of eye trouble, morning and evening. And tarsal tumor. Tosis and ciliary irritation. Venous congestion of the skin. So, sepia is a useful remedy in the deciduous of the skin. Then next is the spigenia. In that eyes fill to large preview pain on turning them, pupil dilated, photophobia, there is a rheumatic ophthalmia, severe pain in and around the eye, extending deep into the socket, there is a ciliary neuralgia, a true neuritis, worse by Touch motion and better by lying on the right side. So, spigelia is also useful remedy in uh, diseases of the sclera with ciliary, neuralgia, photophobia, and pupil dilation. So, next is the terebin thinner. Terebin thinner is a characteristic remedy when there is a albuminous, scanty, High color, smoky urine with the dull pain on burning in the region of the kidney 
and pain extends from the kidney down through the ureter so there is the characteristic this is the characteristic feature of the keratin tube clinically it is neurotic excessive pain in or over the eye from dull grumbling aching beating sore to sharp starting axis it would almost drive the patient crazy it involves the ball and is over and around the eye through to corresponding side of the eye often following supra orbital nerve always man sometimes paralysis r 1 to 3 am corresponding side of his to is which so the characteristic of keratin tube is that there is a albumina can be high color smoke during mutual pain burning in the region of the kidney and pain may extend the kidney through the ureter with the ipis clara it is useful remedy in a ipis clara then next is the thuja oxidant thuja is a very great and useful remedy in the inflammation of sclera when there is a nocturnal agglutination pimple on lower mid margin sky in the right eye white of eye with a much inflamed then subjectively there is a tearing pain in the left brow disappear after touch lid feel solid and as if a foreign body there in the eye there is a burning and stinging in the edges of the lid evening and in the eyes with injection eyes feel dry candy pressure in the eyes painful stitch through the center of the eye and commencing in the center of the brain so this is all about the homeopathic therapeutic of diseases of the skin so in that we see that the many homeopathic remedies we can use in the diseases of sclera like a thuja oxidantalis terebin thena which is useful in episcleritis pygelia which is useful in a scleritis sepia then rustox is useful in staphyloma after suppurative inflammation then physostigma it is also useful in a staphyloma after suppurative inflammation then mercurius is a great deep acting remedy kali iodum is also useful in episcleritis and scleritis cyparsal is a great remedy useful in diseases of sclera refresh of epinalis is a characteristic remedy useful in eye complaints then bryonia alba which is also a useful remedy in episcleritis belladonna clinic album the great acting deep acting remedy useful in a diseases of sclera with the erysipelas and staphyloma after suppurative inflammation epis medicica is also useful in staphyloma after suppurative inflammation of sclera and aconite nepal which is useful in the first stage of inflammation or trauma of cornea conjunctiva sclera and gray. so this is all about the inflammation of a sclera that is superficial inflammation when it is episcleritis and when there is a deep inflammation of the sclera it is called as scleritis and the staphyloma after suppurative inflammation so from today's topic we was learn about the staphyloma so staphyloma it is a bulging of a eyeball along with the uveal tissue so there is a bulging of a eyeball along with uveal tissue in that when 
the bulging of her eyeball along the uvea tissue anteriorly then there is the anterior staphyloma then it is the bulging of ciliary body due to thinning of the sclera then it is the ciliary staphyloma it is the equatorial third one and posterior due to the high myopia then there is the bulging of the sclera at the posterior pole of the eyeball so there is a classification diagram when we see there is a this is the interciliary this is the ciliary staphyloma this one is the equatorial and this is the posterior staphyloma as eyeball is protruding posteriorly in that in equatorial line in that in the interciliary line in that ciliary body is protruded along with eyeball so this is all about the staphyloma and this is the sclerotitis when there is the inflammation of the sclera deeply there is the sclerotitis this is the pathology classification of sclerotitis that how is see the diffuse non necrosis sclerotitis and this is a diagram of a nodular non necrotizing sclerotitis that there is a nodule formation this is a diagram of a necrotizing sclerotitis with inflammation and this is a diagram of necrotizing sclerotitis without inflammation so this is all about sclerotitis then this is the epicleritis that is inflammation of the sclera superficially when there is a superficial inflammation of sclera then there is the epicleritis it is called as the epicleritis in that we see we was seen about the inflammation of subcondylar fiber and epicleritic tissue with the superficial layer of the sclera with the etiology then there are two types that is diffuse or epicleritis and nodular epicleritis with the clinical course in that this is the simple or diffuse epicleritis and this is the diagram of a nodular epicleritis that how there is a nodule formation in the superficial inflammation of the sclera so there is a nodule formation along the limbus and this is a simple or diffuse epicleritis in that we see in the signs and symptoms that is pain tenderness of the eye hard pinkish red nodule no discharge lacrimation or photophobia and it is to to free away mm away from the limbus nodule are thick to deep structure tender to touch nasal ulcers there is a hyperemia of surrounding conjunctiva and it can spread to the deeper layer so it can cause a complication that way the epicleritis goes deeperly it causes a scleritis or uvea and treatment in that we can use the hydrocortisone 1% drop 2 hourly local heat general treatment is more important than local and there is a elimination of a septic or tuberculous focus so there is a elimination of a septic or tubercular focus is the more important in a epicleritis so this is a diagrammatic representation of the epicleritis that how the epicleritis is formed in that this is epicleritis so this is all about the diseases of sclera and its homeopathic treatment so in a today's lecture we was discuss about the diseases of sclera in detail that is epicleritis scleritis and staphyloma with that their homeopathic therapeutic in detail so today's lecture is over here and for tomorrow we can study about the cataract so cataract is the very important topic in a ophthalmology it is useful in treating patient there is a many types of the cataract so we was we will the we will learn tomorrow for about the cataract till that have a good day and thank you